welcome to the fifth and final round of the 1996 Mobile One Top Gear British Rally Championship. Held on the Isle of Man, the three-day event includes no less than 235 miles of fast, furious special stages. Gwyndaf Evans and Howard Davis are already the new British Rally Champions in their works Ford Escort RS2000. Germany's World Rally star Armin Schwartz, on his first visit to the Isle of Man, leads a star-studded cast of players. Follow all the excitement and drama in the next half hour from the Manx International Rally. 30 special stages over the island's fast undulating tarmac roads make this the fastest rally in the championship. But before the rally began, the public were able to meet the drivers at an autograph signing session in the centre of Douglas. Leading the cars away from the famous TT grandstand was Armin Schwartz in the works Toyota Celica. Gwyndaf Evans was the next to start the short stage, which included part of the TT circuit itself. Depending which way you look at it, 1994 Austrian champion Kurt Gottlicker could be driving one of two cars. Is it a red car or a white one? First fin along was Harry Rovampera having his second outing in an Escort RS2000. There were champions galore on this rally. This is Russian champion Alexander Potapov in his pro-drive prepared Subaru Impreza. And this year's Irish tarmac champion Bertie Fischer, a definite favourite to win. After his two-litre win on the previous rally in Ulster, great things were expected of Robbie Head in the Renault Megane. That right to opens 100. But it would be a short rally for Head, with former Manx winner Brian Thomas alongside him. Open 300. The car was fantastic. We were confident. I knew we could do well, and I was just trying hard. I mean, it's uh, one of these things, but we'll, we'll fight another day. Ireland's top rally driver has won 17 international events, but a win on the Manx International has so far eluded Bertie Fisher. He and Rory Kennedy set fastest time on the first two stages, determined to beat that jinx. Unfamiliar with the island, Armin Schwartz and Dennis Giraudet felt that three days wrecking was not enough to let them give maximum attack. Nevertheless, they were within a second of Fisher after five stages, but claimed to be settling in. Maintaining third overall with little pressure now that the championship had been won were Gwyndaf Evans and Howard Davis in the F2 Escort. They would not be able to score championship points and were on something of a test run. So what's your approach to this rally? Just come here to enjoy ourselves, really, and obviously learn a bit on the car for next year. We've got the development kit engine in the Ford Aris 2000, and um, we're here to hopefully learn for next year. The Renault Megans have improved steadily all year. With Robbie Head's demise, Renault's fortunes were now in the hands of Sir Jordan. On his first trip to the island, he was holding fourth. Heading the championship challenge were Mark Higgins and Phil Mills in the Nissan Sunny. They were Nissan's sole representatives on this rally, as Turkish driver Erjan Kazaz had non-started for alleged financial reasons. And right five, and left four long opens fast. After a bad year in 1995 with Peugeot and no competitive drive at all so far this year, Manxman Martin Rowe was relishing his works drive with Volkswagen. VW had had a disastrous Ulster rally the month before. It was our gearbox problem that had been dogging us for the year, but um, hopefully we're now running these two cars now on a mixture of gearboxes, so um, we hope we've got it right. And everything seemed all right in the VW camp this time, with regular driver Tapio Laukonen at his brilliant best. But on stage five, he struck a problem. Indeed, the old problem. The loss of fifth gear on the stage between Laxey and Onken. I'm quite happy about my driving, but uh, now we broke the gearbox and we have to change it. We lost maybe uh, one minute on the last stage, that's all. With the new gearbox installed, Tapio set off in fine fettle on stage six. Until this. 
Co-driver Risto Manison Mackey was relegated to the rear of the car to balance it and they dropped to 48th. Harry Groven Pera and Yuha Repo were lying third among the F2 runners in their Ford Escort and starting to speed up over the magnificent Manx lanes. It was their first visit to the island and they were enjoying the scenery. On stage six, they were about to see more of it. This place, it seems to be very slippery. Actually, we have it that also in our notes that it's slippery, but uh, there was a lot of loose uh, sand or something like that on the place and we hit... Uh, in this uh, wall or something like that in uh, in, in the right-hand corner and then it pre broke the brake caliper and then that's why we couldn't continue. Last year's Group N winner Trevor Cathers has again been a big name in the Group N Production Cup but his battle for honours with Oli Haki was to come to a sudden and dramatic end. Harkey also had his problems, a puncture led to complications and lost time. Unlike Cuthers, though, Harkey at least managed to stay on the road. You're still possibly leading the Group N because Trevor Cuthers has a problem. Yes, I think so, that we have, have still possibilities to win that category. So you can uh, repair it OK now? Yes, I think so. So what position are you lying overall? <laughs> I have no, no idea. <laughs> In fact, he'd plummeted to last place, but with Cathers now out of the running, he need only finish to claim the cup. The Max Rally is truly a cosmopolitan affair. The appearance of the Russian Alexander Potapov was testimony to that. He got off on the wrong foot by allegedly missing a loop on the opening spectator stage, but given the benefit of the doubt, he was then never out of the top ten. This road is very difficult. And I think when we go... Uh, the next time. The next time? The next year. Next year, next year. Better. Possible, we're better. Meanwhile, Armin Schwartz was getting to grips with the unfamiliar bump and grind of the Manx Rally's unique island roads. As the first leg headed to its conclusion, the German star was still having to play second fiddle to Irishman Bertie Fisher. Although the relatively short first leg was hardly going to decide the event, the Osterman was still doing his best to unsettle his rival. He saved the best till the last stage of the day, a full 20 seconds quicker through Kringle. So, the end of the first day after 55 fast and furious stage miles. But it's really only a taste of what's to come. For tomorrow, there are 117 stage miles, the length and breadth of the island. The rally's only just started. And so, with one leg down and two to go, Bertie Fisher, the overall leader from Armin Schwartz, says you're down in third and heading the two-litre class. Then British champion Gwyneth Evans, followed by Maxman Mark Higgins. Maybe Friday the 13th was a day to stay in bed. Bertie Fisher may later have wished he had. His nearest rival, Armin Schwartz, was off to a flying start. Gwyneth Evans was intent on catching Frenchman Ser Jordan. It wouldn't take long. Sadly for Serge, a promising challenge petered out. A mile into the day's first stage, his drive shaft broke. The Renault's rally was run. No such problems for the others at the head of the pack, though. Bertie Fisher rolled safely into service. Again, he was forcing the pace from the second-placed Armin Schwartz. A nice lead of 26 <coughs> seconds. Are you happy with that at the moment? Well, yes, obviously. Uh, better to be 26 in front than 26 behind, that's for sure. But, um, you know, it's by no means a big lead, but it's, it's, just, it's probably a bigger lead than we expected we would have with someone like Armin Schwartz, you know. We didn't know we haven't done any mistake and uh, everything went like before. And uh, we lost 20 seconds, but I don't know where. Anyway, you're in good shape for today. Are you enjoying it? Yes, of course. He wasn't the only one. Born on the island, Mark Higgins had something of an advantage over the rest. He was using his local knowledge to full effect and holding the Formula 2 lead. Neil Simpson has had a mixed year, but the Max was looking like his best drive yet. The early signs for his escort, encouraging. Like many of the drivers, Simpson experienced his fair share of dramas during the rally. The Manx is ever living up to its punishing reputation. 
I'd love to be second in the British Championship and give Ford a 1-2. That'd be excellent. Um, but Mark's really flying here. It's his home territory, so I'm struggling to catch him. I think we can still actually finish second in the Championship. Now, Neil Simpson seems to be the one that's sort of closest to us as well. So we'll see how things go. But everybody's dropped out again. A load have gone this morning. A long way to go. You know, we can win it yet. <laughs> Several weeks before the rally, we'd joined the Nissan team in Southern Ireland as they prepared for the particular demands of the tarmac surface on the Max. The all-important tyres hand-cut, suspension and brakes all subjected to rigorous testing. It's a time-consuming but nonetheless essential part of the business. Then it was off to the Isle of Man test stage. Our own Tony Mason was there for a particularly close look. And you've been doing a bit of development, have you, this morning? Yeah, I've changed the suspension setting slightly, so it seems to be working a little bit better now. So hopefully it should be right for tomorrow. Hopefully it should be right for today, that's <laughs> The test stage took cars up the notoriously bumpy Druidale stage to Brandywell Cottage and on down to Sartfield. As often happens, there was mist on the top for the drivers to contend with. I was more concerned with reading the notes. Right. Back of the big jumps here. Well, I'm up there. Oh, yeah. Whoa, I've been right up in the air. Very quick section this is now. Very fast, but it's not speeding. You didn't know. About 120 now, just a little break there. Then back on the power, it'll take off a little bit. Slide out again. Bit of a jump here, it's quite nasty. Well, that was very impressive. Good man. The only trouble is I couldn't actually read the notes. <laughs> about so much. Oh, no, you want me ticket. Dear Back in the rally, the leader, Bertie Fisher, was in trouble. The Impreza went onto three cylinders after some loose metal damaged the plug. He was out, and Armin Schwartz swept into the lead in the Toyota. <laughs> Evans' development engine was really producing the goods, if a little noisily. He had now inherited second place, just a minute and a quarter behind Schwartz. On stage four, he'd actually equaled the Toyota's time and was obviously enjoying the extra power. I thought you were out here for a little development run with this car and a bit of testing. You're lying second overall. Yeah, well, that's a big bonus, isn't it, you know? But uh, we are learning with the car and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a development. It's an interim stage of the car for next year. Um, we'll hopefully have a bit more power again next year, so look out, is it? <laughs> On the 14th stage, on the west of the island, north of Peel, Evans actually set fastest time overall, a second quicker than Schwartz. Three left, opens for crest, 70, eight right, eight right. Late, six left of a crest, and three right. 30, open, four left long, 100, and four left long. What's that much? Qu Qualid. The man who never wears driving gloves had excelled again, but things looked bad. Quindav, Quindav, sitting on the stop line of the last stage, we think the engine's gone bang. It was a good development trip and we've learned, so we go back and try and uh, put things right. Gwyndaf was saying the car was much faster. Could you feel it from the co-driver's side? Yeah, definitely. Um, it was it was a lot more power in the car. Um, obviously, as Gwyndaf said, it's a development trip and we need to go back to the drawing board to do a bit more development for next year. But certainly it's going to make next year look a lot more uh, exciting. I can't wait. Ford had fitted the more powerful engine from Gwyndaf Evans' championship winning escort into the car of Neil Simpson and Steve Martin. Simpson was using the power to the full and executed the Sarkfield hairpin perfectly. But trouble was not far down the road. We went off in the last stage into a river and I had to run down the river uh, about 100 yards to get Neil back out to the Ford. We were able to go down the river for about 100, 150 yards. What, you mean you, you had to get out? I had to get out first to assess how deep it was and run down in front of the car. I'm absolutely wet through, so... Well, then he just drove behind you? He drove behind us in the car, yeah. Despite it being Friday the 13th, and this being stage 13, luck was with the Northerners, and they were still in the rally. But their good fortune wasn't to last. The engine started to miss. Uh, we think the engine's gone. The engine's blown. And uh, no, not the last stage, the stage before it got very hot. And we managed to cool it. We slowed down in the stage and put the fans on, and it cooled the engine. 
Uh, but this last stage, it's been running on three cylinders and it's a knocking noise now, so... Oh, that's bad luck. Terrible. And this left Yorkshire Simonite sisters as the sole Ford Works car. Having won the British Ladies' Championship, Stephanie and Rachel were just outside the top ten. Noisily climbing his way up the leaderboard was Austrian Kurt Gutlicker in his Mike Taylor prepared escort Cosworth. He was up in third place, an impressive Manx debut. What do you think of the Manx roads? Oh, I tell yesterday, you have only two chances here. You like it or you hate it. You come again or you never come again. <laughs> Till now, I like it. <laughs> For such a tiny island, the Isle of Man does seem to have a knack for producing talented rally drivers. The place is teeming with them. The Higgins family spans three generations. as Mark and David, Mum and Dad, Tony and Christina, and Grandma and Grandpa, former stars Evelyn and Ken Lease. David Higgins in the Asquith Honda was having a good rally up in the top ten by the end of day two. David, you're the baby of the family, so to speak. When did you first get involved in rallying? Um, as long as I remember, I was in a pram watching rallies of mum and dad competing and grandparents, so right from the word go, but I actually done my first rally at um, 16 years old in a road rally in a Mark II Escort. Tony and Christina were in a Group N Civic and leading their class with ease. We've decided at, um, at the moment just sort of come back and uh, join in rather than be watching, watching these two all the time. What's made you come back and compete again this year? I think the, the boys were quite keen for us to do it and they, they sort of half organised the drive for us and it just seemed to happen and at the beginning I said well I wasn't going to co-drive and then they all said oh yeah you've got to do it as well so it was a change to wear the overalls instead of washing them. <laughs> Another Manx husband and wife team going really well were Nigel and Michaela Cannell in their Astra. Not only are you leading your class but you're also leading the Group N entirely. Yeah that's right we seem to be... Uh... Or everybody else has fallen out, I don't know whether it's us going fast or them going slow. How quickly is he driving? Uh, he's not bad, he's still got a bit more pace yet. You reckon? Oh, definitely, yes. Very much on the pace was another Manxman, Martin Rowe. He and Nicky Beach were up in fourth place in the VW Golf. After his layoff, he was driving quickly but sensibly. In the Isle of Man, you can take your driving test when you're 16. Rob Watson has, therefore, been driving three years. He's one of the newest stars and was up in the top 20. Why do you think there's such strong interest here in the Isle of Man in rallying and so many drivers? So competitive. All the Manx drivers, they're so competitive against each other. And it's, uh, it's always battles between all the Manx boys. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I think that's the main reason. A former Manx motocross and trials champion, Peter Christian, is an old hand at this rally and was having another good run in his Ford RS 2000. At the end of day two, he and co-driver Peter Biggs were also in the top 20. And the newest Manx driver of the lot, Kevin Curran from Castletown. Oh, I have six months vintage, I am. Just six months, yes. So, uh, coming over here to the Isle of Man with all these amazing drivers, do you think it might improve your driving a bit? Well, I'm not a tarmac man, but I've no choice at the moment, so uh, hopefully it's going to improve my, my ability on this stuff, you know. The cheerful incomer to the island was having a good event and really getting to know the roads. But his escort, Cosworth, would retire on stage 17 at Selby Glen when the gearbox gave up the ghost. The Manx International wouldn't be complete without the famous Castletown stage, which runs round the harbour and through the town, a sort of mini Monaco. It's a great spectator stage, and if you want to see a rally at close quarters, this is the place to be. Higgins could almost drive these rows with his eyes shut. Nightfall wasn't about to hold him up. Kurt Goodlicker might make a decent footballer. He certainly found the net quickly enough. Martin Rowe's first time out on the Volkswagen continued to go with a swing. Jock Armstrong wasn't far behind in the Formula 2 chase. 
The name of Higgins was a dominant feature too. Mark's brother David doing very nicely. The island awoke to warm Saturday sunshine. Mark Higgins and Phil Mills continued to set a scorching pace at the head of the Formula 2 field. Going right of a crest, OK, right five at sign, 50 cut left, right four around bail, and left four exit. 50, left six, 60, left six, 50, right five long in to pump, keep left, then left four plus, late of a crest. Then right four plus, opens at 70, 40, turn left one. Everything looked to be going smoothly enough, then two miles into the stage, they hit trouble. What are you doing walking down here? <laughs> the clutch is actually gone, so uh, we needed to push off the finish line just to get down to the emergency vehicle down there, so they're going to see if they can fix, fix the clutch now. Have you got time to do that? We've got about eight minutes, I think, so we'll see, uh, see what we can do. In fact, they didn't quite make it. Higgins was forced to go on clutchless. He carried on regardless through the next stage. Relieved to be through it, the St John's service offered the chance of some much-needed first aid. How much time have you got for this job here? We've got about 18 minutes, so they think they can nearly do it in that. It's going to be very tight, but we've got a big gap behind, so we can afford to, to lose road penalties anyway. Right. Oh, well, let's hope it all goes well. Yeah, the drama never stops on this event, does it? <laughs> Chuck Armstrong would probably agree. It looks like someone forgot to close the boot. A bit of a drag, but he still managed to retain second to Higgins in Formula 2. Now then, what have you been doing? Up to your old tricks again? Ah, uh, well, catches out now and again. Just at, a, uh, like, a 90 left here, pin round a bale. There's some gravel there that wasn't there yesterday on the stage, so obviously the calf slid a bit wider. Just clipped the post on the way out, so... It slows you down a lot when the tailgate goes up, so I'll maybe uh, get them to pop rivet the tailgate down or something like that. Meanwhile, Mark and the mechanics work wonders. Higgins was back on course. Unconcerned by the trials and tribulations of the chasers, overall leader Armin Schwartz was still out on his own. As the rally completed its final loop around the island, Schwartz entertained the crowd and extended his lead almost stage by stage. Martin Rowe continued to steer his GTI in the direction of an excellent top four finish. A little way back, Finnish teammate Tapio Laukinen was driving his golf towards a two-car completion for Volkswagen. Forced to concede the latest title to Stephanie Simonite, 22-year-old Jane Gunningham was still working hard to secure a good finish to the season and, of course, do her bit to further the Peugeot course too. David Higgins was making sure that the Manx rally was turned into truly a family affair. Like brother Mark and mum and dad too, he claimed a class victory, a remarkable achievement. His drive shaft broken, Jock Armstrong had to be pushed, first by Alexander Popatov, then by an understandably impatient David Higgins. Amid angry protests from the drivers held up through the Curra stage, Armstrong was later excluded. Push him out the way! Go on! Armin Schwartz, though, was able to rise above the squabbling. Driving impeccably, the Germans swept home to victory. Congratulations, Armin. A perfect drive. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure to be here, yeah? For Mark Higgins, victory in Formula 2 and second overall. Congratulations. Well done, Mark. Great drive. No, I'm delighted. It's been, just been one of those years and it's nice to finish on a, on a high note for us like this. And I think as much as anything, the team deserves this because they've worked so hard and uh, it's just great to be able to pay them back with something. The final Isle of Man standings then, Armin Schwartz, the overall winner, then Higgins and Gutlicker. So after five gruelling championship rounds, it was finally clear who'd emerged top of their class.
As for the manufacturer's standings, Ford finished top of the pile, then Nissan and Volkswagen. In the Mobile One Top Gear British Championship, the brothers Higgins second and fifth, the sisters Simonite fourth, Justin Dale a fine third, but confirmation that Gwyneth Evans and Howard Davis, the 1996 winners. Roll on 97. We'll leave you on board with the champions in action. See you next year. Flat left long into flat right long, Titan 70. Three right of a jump into... Right and left of a bad jump. Three right and left of a bump. 50. Late three right sharp. 70 of a king. Three right into nine right long. Into nine right long. And tight nine left. Six in and left six. 130. Turn left four plus. 70. Left six, long, long. 100. House, right two. 70. Over crest. Max right long. 80. Cut right, left three on the bridge. Then left three plus long, Titans, 70, gap, and right three around Castle, and right five long, 50, cut right, then left two around Monument, 40, right four plus, and right four, then max right, 50, max left, 80, max left long, OK, then right six long, and right three early. And left two plus. 350. Over finish. Left six long, into chicane, left entry. Right, five plus in. 250. Right, six. 250. Right, six. 80. Right, four plus. 90. Turn left to a third reflector on left. Then keep right to the grid. Then max right, 250. Left four long, then care, cut left, right two around bail. Five, four, three, two, one, go. 50. Max left, long, long, then right two. 30, left two. Then left six, 50. Cut left, max right of a crest, max left, 40, right six long, 70, right five fast of a crest, to max left long, 60, right two plus. And left two, tight. 
70. Max Prest, right dish, 70. Right two Titans, into left two. 30. Max Prest long, then right two. Then left five, into right four plus. Max Crest and cut right, left six long, and right six, 60, turn left two, into right one, handbrake. And left four plus, 70.